In recent times, holiday dinners seem to have turned into regular roast sessions, with those dishing out the heat often unable to handle it themselves. Today on our lounge, if you can't handle it, stay out of the kitchen. Up first, entitled in-laws can't wait to get their hands on your cash. Check, please. Am I the a-hole for silently getting up and walking out of the restaurant during New Year's Eve dinner after I was told to pay for everyone at the table? I'm female, 32, and recently inherited a good amount of money from my mom. I keep the money in a separate account as I still haven't decided what to do with it, and I didn't want it to go to waste. I notice my husband constantly bringing up the inheritance money and making countless suggestions as to how I should spend it. Another thing is that he expects me to pay for nearly everything. For New Year's Eve, my husband and I met up with his family at a restaurant to celebrate. It was going fine until I found out that I was expected to pay for everyone at the table. My husband's mom joked about paying for dinner out of my inheritance pocket, which made me livid but I showed no reaction. I just silently paid for my own food and drinks, then got up and made my way out of the restaurant. They were shouting after me like a crowd, and my husband tried to get me to come back, but I drove home. He got back at 3 a.m., yelling at me, saying I was pathetic to get up and walk out on him and his family after they relied on me to pay for their food, and thought I was gracious enough to do it but they were wrong. He said I humiliated him and the family, and that what I did was an attempt to get back at them for not being able to help my mom when she was sick. Not true, is all I'm gonna say. He is mad and is saying that I caused a huge rift between his family and me when it wouldn't have hurt me to pay for the celebratory dinner. Let's check in with the community and see what they think. RickSignal7022 says, Am I the a whole? So let me get this straight. Your mother died after an illness. And the thing your in-laws take from this is great, now she can pay for everything. Yeah, not the a whole. Christine MFM84 says, This not the a whole. I'd tell your husband you'd much rather have your mother around than the money, but him and his family trying to blindside you into spending it on them is disgusting. Did you plan on taking your time to decide what you want to do with that money and don't want anything like this to occur again? Electronic Krupp 1716 chimes in, not the a whole but please see a lawyer ASAP. After this trick, your husband is likely to divorce you to go after the inheritance. Make sure your affairs are legally airtight so he can't touch it. Wow. It's appalling to think that your husband and his family actually expected you to foot the bill. You really need to establish clear boundaries regarding the fact that your inheritance is yours alone, not his or his family's. He must understand unequivocally that he will never lay a finger on it, and it's certainly not up for charity. It's crucial to draw that line. Do you believe Opie should divide her inheritance? Did she go too far? Let us know below. Next, your body is a temple. Am I in the wrong for abruptly standing up from my chair in the midst of Christmas dinner and shouting, shut the fuck up about my body in response to my husband's remarks? Ever since I gave birth to our son months ago, my husband has been making indirect comments about my body. He never uses outright hurtful language, but I find his so-called observations deeply upsetting. For instance, he might see me wearing an old top and say, oh, that top used to suit you but not anymore or glance at my waist and remark, Wow, I didn't realize your waist could expand this much. These are all passive-aggressive remarks that I've tried to brush off. Until it became a recurring theme, persisting for months on end. During a Christmas gathering at his family's house, my sister-in-law complimented my floral maxi dress to which my husband chimed in, saying, I agree, it looks nice on you, though your waist could be smaller. The room fell into an awkward silence, and I was seething with rage. This was the final straw. I abruptly stood up from my chair, unable to contain my emotions any longer, and shouted at the top of my lungs, shut the fuck up about my body. My husband was rendered speechless, while his family looked on in shock. Some attempted to calm me down, but tensions only escalated, resulting in an early end to dinner, with my husband storming off to a friend's place for the night, leaving behind a scathing text accusing me of embarrassing him and causing a scene over a harmless observation. Now. I feel like a complete fool and in a hole believing that I ruined Christmas for everyone with my perceived oversensitivity. Am I in the wrong here? In response, F. Grigby provides a nuanced perspective, suggesting that delving into therapy might reveal the emotionally abusive dynamic perpetuated by your husband. 
It's imperative not to internalize any guilt for firmly standing against his harmful behavior, as your husband's suggestion for therapy might serve as a reflection of his own unresolved issues and manipulative tendencies. Knife Special 349 chimes in, advocating for divorce, citing the evident deliberate hurtfulness and manipulation underlying your husband's remarks. It's paramount not to suppress your emotions but rather to consistently challenge his behavior until he acknowledges or chooses to depart from it. Maria 197 8354 echoes these sentiments, emphasizing that your husband's comments transcend mere observations constituting degrading and abusive behavior. Your assertiveness in standing up for yourself amid such circumstances is commendable and necessary for your well-being. Kiki Moon empathizes with your plight, shedding light on the societal pressures surrounding women's postpartum bodies and applauding your decision to confront your husband's disrespectful comments head-on. Your husband's defensive reaction reflects his own insecurities and disregard for your feelings, further highlighting the toxicity of the situation. In this context, you are not at fault, rather, You've demonstrated strength in resisting mistreatment and asserting your worth. Remember, seeking support from loved ones and professionals can provide you with the strength and clarity needed to navigate this challenging situation effectively. Regarding your query about whether you're in the wrong for refusing to bake a wedding cake for your brother and his fiancée after they declined to compensate you, it's entirely reasonable to assert your worth and refuse to work for free. After all, no one should be expected to provide their services without fair compensation, and standing up for your value is crucial for maintaining healthy boundaries and self-respect. I'm a 25-year-old woman who has a deep passion for baking. It's more than just a hobby. It's something I genuinely love to do in my free time. I even have an Instagram account dedicated to showcasing my baked creations, mainly focusing on the cakes I bake and decorate. I often make these cakes for family and friends, especially for birthdays or special occasions like Christmas and Easter. While I never charge for these cakes, I do receive compensation in various forms from my loved ones. They might gift me money, a gift card to my favorite restaurants, or even make me a dish in return as a token of appreciation. Recently, my younger brother, who is 23, and his fianci, also 23, approached me several months in advance of their wedding. They asked if I could make their wedding cake, which would undoubtedly be my most significant order yet. They envisioned a three-layer cake for their 75-person wedding, with the flavor of strawberry shortcake, as it's their absolute favorite. Initially, I hesitated, considering the magnitude of the task. However, I agreed under the condition that I would be compensated for my efforts. I explained to them that creating such a cake would require a substantial amount of my time, labor, and resources, and thus, it wouldn't be feasible for me to do it without compensation. I provided them with a very fair price for a cake of that caliber, and they agreed to it. Additionally, I made it clear that I expected to be paid before the wedding. I went above and beyond to ensure their satisfaction, providing multiple sketches of the cake design and even creating a practice batch for them to sample, which they loved and approved. Fast forward to a week before the wedding, I reached out to my brother for payment so I could purchase the remaining ingredients for the cake. Despite assurances that he would provide the payment promptly, he kept delaying, and the payment never materialized. Despite my attempts to reach out, they avoided giving me the payment. With just a day left before the wedding, I once again tried to collect the payment but instead of cooperation, I was met with hostility. They accused me of being selfish for expecting payment citing that I don't charge other family members for my baking. However, I explained that this was a unique circumstance given the size and significance of the order. Despite their demands for the cake to be made, I stood my ground and refused to proceed without payment. On the day of the wedding, I made the difficult decision not to attend due to the disrespect I faced. Now, I'm facing a barrage of nasty messages from my brother, his fianci, and her family, while my own family is divided on the matter. In seeking the opinion of the community, the consensus seems to be that I am not the whole in this situation. Many commend my ability to set and enforce boundaries without succumbing to guilt. It's noted that my upfront approach prevented potential resentment and conflict down the line. Ultimately, it's recognized that my decision was fair and reasonable given the circumstances. Debased NYC provides a straightforward assessment 
labeling my brother and his wife as entitled individuals, while affirming that I am not the a-hole in this situation. They acknowledged that I was transparent about the charges, and $400 for a 75-person wedding cake is considered reasonable. It's highlighted that my brother and his wife attempted to guilt me into providing the cake for free at the last minute, which is unacceptable. The fact that their family is also piling on demonstrates a systemic entitlement issue within their familial dynamics. Debased NYC suggests that such behavior might warrant low contact or even no contact in the future, as no one should be expected to work for free. They emphasize the importance of understanding that people deserve compensation for their time and materials. If my brother and his wife fail to grasp this concept, then they don't deserve a cake, and it's their loss. Ultimately, it's noted that no business would provide their services without payment, and the same principle applies here. As for the next situation involving revealing family secrets at Christmas dinner, it seems like a complex scenario. As a nurse practitioner specializing in maternity care and working closely with doctors and midwives, I have a deep understanding of the sensitivities surrounding childbirth and family dynamics. My fiancé, who is completing his residency, and I have chosen to live together without rushing into marriage, much to the chagrin of my religious parents. Despite their disapproval, we've made our decisions as adults. During this Christmas gathering with 17 family members, tensions are likely running high. My parents' dissatisfaction with our living arrangements might be bubbling beneath the surface, leading to potential conflicts. In such a situation, bringing up my brother's premature birth could be seen as a way to redirect the conversation and divert attention from our personal choices. However, the appropriateness of this action depends on various factors, including the family's dynamics, the atmosphere at the dinner table, and the potential impact on my brother and parents. While it's understandable to want to shift the focus away from uncomfortable topics, airing family secrets in a public setting like Christmas dinner could cause unintended consequences. It might lead to hurt feelings, embarrassment, or even resentment among family members. Therefore, it's essential to consider the potential repercussions before resorting to such tactics. In this case, I might need to reflect on alternative ways to navigate the family dynamic and address any underlying tensions without resorting to revealing sensitive information. During dinner, tensions escalated as my mom began expressing relief about our upcoming marriage, implying that she wouldn't be embarrassed at church anymore. My dad chimed in praising my three older siblings for either marrying before living together or quickly marrying after moving in together. This recurring argument, which my fiancé found embarrassing and I found infuriating, had reached its breaking point. Despite my repeated requests for them to accept my life choices, my parents persisted in trying to control my decisions. Frustrated by their relentless interference, I decided to shift the conversation by bringing up a premature baby I had read about. Describing the baby's strength and health despite being born almost three months premature, I watched as my parents' expressions turned from pride to discomfort. Drawing a parallel, I inquired about my oldest brother, born almost four months premature, and suggested we look through the family album to revisit his birth records. I already knew the details from my grandmother, who had shared them with me when my parents first attempted to shame me. Uncomfortable with the sudden shift in conversation, my parents quickly changed the subject after supper. Later, they admonished me for bringing up private matters in their home. In response, I warned them that if they ever mentioned my living arrangements again, I would not hesitate to remind them that my mom was in her second trimester when they got married. While my parents were angered by my confrontation, my fiancé was relieved that the topic seemed to be off the table for good. As for the community's thoughts, they may see my actions as a bold stance against parental interference, while others might view it as unnecessarily confrontational. Ultimately, my intention was to assert my autonomy and put an end to the incessant scrutiny of my life choices. It seems like the community is largely supportive of my actions during the Christmas dinner confrontation. Secret Jealous 4342 commends my handling of the situation, noting that I didn't resort to embarrassing my parents but instead stood my ground assertively. They also found humor in the revelation about where I obtained my blackmail information suggesting that Grandma had been holding on to that knowledge for quite some time. Curious 14595 echoes this sentiment, 
acknowledging that I had to take a stronger measure to address my parents' vocal rudeness and hypocrisy. They appreciate the finesse with which I conveyed my message, likening it to a Christmas miracle where my parents were metaphorically run over by the reindeer of truth, who yes me and the queen of disco also expressed support, highlighting the irony of judgmental behavior from individuals with hidden secrets. They emphasize that my actions were justified given the circumstances and assert that I played the right cards to get my point across effectively. Overall, the consensus among the commenters is that I handled the situation appropriately and successfully shut down my parents' intrusive behavior. What do you all think about this situation? Have you experienced something similar? Feel free to share your stories in the comments below. Thanks for tuning into our space today. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And make sure you ring that notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Looking forward to seeing you next time.